Welcome. This is the uh, Algebra 2 end of course practice test, the Tennessee Algebra 2 end of course practice test, I should say. Uh, question number 43. Now, we've talked about this problem a lot as a, as a group, and we looked at the idea of what does it look like when you graph it, because I know everybody wants to go for the calculator route, and that's great. But we wanted to show you something that's sort of interesting about this one and why you can't necessarily trust your calculator. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm certainly the type of guy who thinks you should use a calculator a lot, but I just don't think that you should lose the vision of what the problem is asking just so you can type things into the calculator because you like to press buttons. I mean, it's not a PlayStation. It is what it is. So this is what the first one looks like when you graph it, or so answer A. Looks pretty close, right? When you graph the second one, and we'll get to how this came about in just a second, you get this. Now if you remember the original graph, they look almost exactly the same. So you're going to have to do a little bit more uh, digging into the, what answers you're getting to see which one is the correct answer. And actually I tend to think the one that's wrong looks more like the picture than the one that looks right, but it is what it is. Anyway, so for this question, the first thing I'm going to do is look at the nature of the shading. That's important. So for my quadratic here, I'm going to shade up. So what I'm looking for is some wherever x squared is, I need to make sure that my eventual answer is going to shade up, so greater than. For my linear equation, I'm going to shade down. So whatever it comes up to be, I need to make sure that it gives me what I want. Now if I look at all the uh, linear equations that happen to be in standard form, they're all less than anyway, so that's a good thing. That's helping me out. It also might be nice to look to see if the bo all the answers given to me and the choices have straight lines or solid lines as opposed to dotted. They all do, but sometimes you can eliminate some just based on the fact that maybe one's dotted and one's solid and, you know, whatever. It might be helpful. So what I'm going to look at now is the x squared terms. I need it to shade up, but I have to be aware that when I convert it into slope-intercept form, I'm going to be dividing by a negative, which means it's going to flip over my inequality, so anything that starts out as less than gives me the greater than that I'm looking for, which means I can go ahead and eliminate anything that starts out as a greater than, because it's going to flip. If you, as you can see right here, C is already greater than, but when I divide by this negative, it's going to flip it, so I can eliminate C completely. For D, same type of thing. It's already greater than, but when I flip it, it's going to be less than, so I'm going to eliminate that. So all I'm really looking at are A and B. And you already saw the graphs of those two things, but we felt it was important for us to look at the idea of how do I get that graph and how do I do it visually by hand or blah, blah, blah. So the bottom parts are the same, exactly. This is exactly the same as this, so I don't really have to worry about it. What I'm looking for is a graph that matches this line right here. So for the first one, to put it in slope-intercept form. I need to draw a line and then get rid of whatever is next to y that's further away from it on the same side of the line. So minus 3x. Bring down my 5y. Then I need to divide everything by 5. Something that I like to do, which is completely optional on your part, is to circle all the things I divide by and just make sure that they're either negative or positive. If it's a negative I'm dividing them by, I need to flip that inequality over. Not negative here, so it's not as big of a deal. So it stays less than or equal to negative 3 fifths x plus 2. So I need to be able to figure out where that is on the graph. Here's my y-intercept and it tells me, based on my slope, to start at 2 and then go down 3 and right 5. So I'm going to go at 2, I'm going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to go right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this line in A would look like this, and it would shade down, so that's kind of nice, but obviously it doesn't match the line properly, so I can say with pretty reasonable certainty that the answer is not going to be A. So that only leaves me with B, but let's just, you know, make sure you can't erase with more pen. Adding more pen does not erase anything, just so you know. So I'm going to write it in, 5x plus 3y is less than or equal to 6. I need to draw my line here, move my 5x over. We've gone over the steps, so I'm not going to spend as much time talking about it. Everything's divided by 3. My super circle is positive, so I don't need to flip anything over. So I've got that less than that I'm looking for. I don't know why I didn't put a 3 there, losing my mind, I would imagine. 
and that's terribly written, so I'm just going to re-erase that for two seconds, put plus two, just like it's supposed to be. So I ended up back and starting in the same place, but this one tells me to go down five and write three. So I'm going to start at two, go down five, and write three, and oh look, it's another point on my line. So I can say with certainty that my answer to this one is B. What we wanted to make sure that you understood is sometimes it's really easy to dive into that calculator even if you go through all the work, still get the wrong answer. So occasionally it's nice to go back into the old ways. I'm not trying to be like back in my day, but nice to go back to the old way, do it by hand a little bit just to make sure your answer is correct. So that's it.